The Bachelor is a show that used to all be about one thing. Fantasy. Dating 30 people? Fantasy. Visiting exotic locations? Fantasy. Falling in love after only a week? Fantasy. Nowadays, however, it's more like a Rihanna song where budding influencers try to find love in a hopeless place. There is, however, one fantasy that remains, the fantasy that this show will ever have a happy ending. And the Bachelor tradition of controversial endings continues with Clayton Eckerd in another drama-filled and frustrating season of The Bachelor. One that had us all tuning in not to see the fantasy, but to see the train wreck. So it's time once again to review the latest season of The Bachelor in order to give it a grade based on four main categories. The lead, the cast, production, and the romance. And this one is not going to be pretty as Clayton's hot mess of a season really had me thinking of all the timelines there could possibly be Rodney for Bachelor, Michael for Bachelor, Mike Johnson for Bachelor. Why did we land in this one? But let's now step out of the metaverse and start with category one. One, the lead. Warning, a lot of opinions lie ahead, they're just that, opinions, and also a few very minor spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home. Tragedy. What else can I call it? What more need be said? The damage. You saw it with your own eyes. So, Clayton. A controversial pick for The Bachelor as one, he was picked before his season even aired, and two, once selected, they gave him almost no airtime on Michelle's season. A truly baffling move, especially when there were so many other options for the lead. Still, production placed their bet on Clayton, promising we'd fall in love with him just as much as they did. Spoiler alert, most of us didn't. However, things start to make some sense when you look back at the kind of ratings Peter Weber's season of The Bachelor got, and how similar this season was to that. So while we were looking at Katie's and Michelle's group of men trying to find a shining star, production was more like... Fine, Peter. Great, it's just some random guy. And they found him. Eager to please, inexperienced in how the show works, a recipe for disaster, and possibly one of the worst bachelors ever. Now, let me be clear, when I say someone's a bad bachelor, I'm not saying they're a bad person. When I say someone's an idiot, I'm not saying they're a bad person. So when I say Clayton was a bad bachelor and an idiot, I'm not calling him a bad person. Clayton can still be good and still be the best partner for Susie, but that doesn't mean he made good decisions as The Bachelor. I mean, I'm certain his dad doesn't think he's a bad person, still, he sent his son off like... Congratulations, A-Wipe. Don't screw the pooch. Only to arrive in Iceland and immediately go... You... have screwed the pooch, in my opinion because Clayton made horrible decisions and he made selfish ones. And he might have had the best of intentions, but that is just further proof that he wasn't ready for the responsibility that was handed to him. It's a strange thing to say, but when you're the lead and when you're dating 30 women, there's a lot of great power there. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Or better yet, as Gabby said it, When you say you love someone, you're assuming responsibility to protect them, to care for them, and to not hurt them. And you didn't do any of those things. But at the end of the day, even if Clayton says he was acting with the best of intentions in mind, those caused a lot of collateral damage. So either he was malicious, which I don't think he was, irresponsible, which I do think he was, not emotionally ready to handle being the bachelor, check mark again, or he was just plain an idiot. Third strike, you're out. And think back to everything with Shanae. Clayton claimed to have not known anything about what was going on with her, but the women say that's not true, as pretty much all of them informed him on the things she said. I tend to believe the women here, considering Clayton said this... When you threw the trophy in the pond, it, to me that was something that was indefensible. I, at that point I'm like... You but can't. you kept but you her! her. You sent her. us home! Yet, he still kept Shanae at the rose ceremony. Not only that, but in Clayton's own words, he looked back at the season and thought... I can't really say I regret anything because I 
had all the best intentions with all of my actions that I took. Okay, not even one, not even the Shanae stuff, and even at the two-on-one, he still indulged Shanae's final Hail Mary of claiming Genevieve was an actress. Are you an actress and are you lying to me? But let me round this back to a comment that Peter Weber made on his podcast. Sometimes, when a contestant like Shanae comes in and is so full-blown 100% enthusiastic about you, it's reassuring. As often you'll be wondering who's there for the right reasons, are women pretending to be into you for a platform? You can't help those kind of thoughts. So when someone like Shanae or Cassidy comes in just full-on gung-ho, it quells some of those fears. Nevertheless, there comes a point where it gets to be just too selfish. When you hear the kind of things Shanae did or the kind of impact she's having on not just one or two women, but the whole group, you have to do something other than just hope it goes away. Which seems to be something Clayton was expecting every time Shanae would have beef with someone and then he'd send them home over Shanae. I was absolutely shocked to hear her talking about Shanae, still. Like, we, I thought we were done with this. I know there's been some drama surrounding Shanae, and I hope this week it's all squashed, I hope we can move on. Which makes me think that Clayton was too much of a selfish bachelor, whether he realized it or not. And certainly he needed more experience. The begging of both Rachel and Gabby to stay, only to immediately realize he wanted to be with Susie, then deciding or being okay with breaking up with the both of them at the same time? Clayton is making a strong case for being one of the worst bachelors ever. At this point, if Juan Pablo, Peter, and Clayton were in a room, I bet you could yell out, Hey, worst bachelor ever! And they'd all turn around like, Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Did you mean, did you mean? So Clayton is getting an F. I was gonna give him a D minus, but the Shanae stuff just put me over the edge. Leading us to category two, the cast. I've seen your file. You're a smart young woman with a bright future ahead of her. Why would you risk it all by getting involved with The Bachelor? Now, the cast for Clayton's season was a really mixed bag. We had peaks and valleys and everything in between. Obviously, there's Shanae and all the horrific comments she made about Elizabeth's ADHD. I have ADHD. I have ADHD too. She has ADHD and it's really bad. My ADHD ass. She also had this magical way of taking everything horrible she was doing and deflecting it onto others. Being two-faced by saying one thing to the women and another to the camera? Nah, it's Elizabeth who's two-faced. Fake crying and then calling herself Meryl Streep? Nah, it's Genevieve who's the actress. I honestly wish Shanae had left night one and Claire here would have stayed. I feel like they would have slotted her into that villain role, but without horrifically crossing the line like Shanae. She could have been a great villain. There was Cassidy and her snatched back Rose, previously engaged Sally, the Sarah Mara feud, and then all the fake crying stuff, and of course the shrimp, which would have been funny if it wasn't wrapped in Shanae's horrible comments. However, on the other side of things, we also got Serene, Teddy, Rachel, and Gabby, and I will say I am really excited for the Rachel and Gabby double bachelorette season. Regardless, the drama really overshadowed a lot of the season, and I felt like there were very few women I got to know. Even Susie felt like she came out of nowhere as the sudden frontrunner come fantasy suites. Ultimately, I had a tough time grading the cast. Like on one hand, we had one of my favorite contestants in a long while in Gabby, but on the other, we had one of the worst in a long while in Shanae. So I finally settled on a D, which now leaves production. Expect disappointment and you will never get disappointed. Now, I've talked a lot about the decision-making that Clayton made all season, but everything Clayton does goes hand-in-hand hand with production. They, for the most part, choose what information he or the women get and how they get it. Like, I have this sneaking suspicion that, based off of how past leads have discussed the show behind the scenes, that somewhere in between hometowns and fantasy suites, someone on the production side of things had a big long talk with Clayton about being more open with his feelings. I mean, this is fantasy suites after all, and you're about to get engaged. Don't let your apprehensions get in the way. How do you feel about Rachel? 
How do you feel about Gabby? How do you feel about Susie? Clayton then stares forward for a long while, but no matter what he says, they go, Hey, that sounds like love to me. Of course, this is just speculation. But something must have happened in between hometowns and fantasy suites to have Clayton suddenly going from, Like, I'm like, I don't want to fall in love with like four people that doesn't make sense. To then saying I love you to pretty much everyone. We also had that Sally wedding day thing to start off the season, which was highly suspect, and there's evidence that there's a lot more to this than what we saw. Saw, something that I talked about in a previous conspiracy video. Of course, again, there's Shanae, who should have been cut from the show the moment she made those comments about Elizabeth's ADHD, but she wasn't. There was stuff like that psychiatrist group date, which was total BS. Hey everyone, I'm a total professional psychiatrist here, but be warned, I'm gonna close out the day by saying one of you is performative, but I'm not gonna say who. But worst of all, they then had me dreaming of the multiverse by having Rodney show up at the end. We could have avoided all of this, please take me to that timeline. So production is getting an F. Except for whoever came up with the idea to have Gabby's dad show up like this to her hometown, that had me sobbing, you and you alone get an A. And finally, there's the romance. Finally, some privacy. It is so crazy down there. Every time there was a flicker of romance this season, it got interrupted by drama, which is not entirely uncommon or even bad in this franchise. Typically, there's some romance to start things off as everyone meets, drama ensues in the middle, then hometowns and fantasy suites is where the romance goes into high gear as we move towards an engagement. But of course, this season, we didn't really get to that point. So the romance was basically severed from the show. I've also run a theory that when the show has one of these highly chaotic endings, the season as a whole is edited in a different way, pushing forward drama and pulling away from the romance. That was on full display this season. Even production didn't know if Clayton would be with anybody until after filming ended. And frankly, the closest thing to romance that I felt all season was with Rachel. Now don't get me wrong, if the drama is all you're here for, you were absolutely feasting this season, and you have every right to grade this season high. But I, personally, want balance. And there was Bubkiss on the romance front this season. So, it gets an F. Which means, mashing all of these scores together, we get an overall grade for the season of... an F. I am highly hopeful and excited for Gabby and Rachel's season, but it almost feels like this go-around of The Bachelor was more of a setup for the next Bachelorette than it was an enjoyable experience on its own. Because every time I think about this season, I just can't get over the times it frustrated me. Maybe it was doomed from the start, as we just didn't know anything about Clayton and couldn't really root for him. But I'm now left to wonder if somewhere out there, in some kind of portal, is another season 26 Bachelor and another Bachelor fan take, who's much happier. So that's it for this review of Clayton's season. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. There's still a lot of off-season content to follow, not all of it Bachelor-related. And of course, leave your thoughts and grades in the comment section below. Until next video, Bachelor fan take, out. Congratulations, A-Wipe. Don't screw the pooch. You... I've screwed the pooch, in my opinion.